Welcome to the Rideshare Guy podcast, where you will learn about the rideshare and mobility industry straight from Harry Campbell, who's got over five years experience covering the industry and has talked to thousands of drivers. There's no better place to stay up to date, entertained, and educated. So let's dive in. So Matthew Lafferty is Curry's co-founder and CEO. Curry is the Uber for construction supply delivery. Curry's idea was born in 2018 while chatting with a plumber. Curry was part of the Y Combinator batch of the summer 2019. Before Curry, Matthew was actually a university English teacher, then country director at the English Language Institute of China in Laos for seven years. And a fun fact about Matthew, he's actually fluent in uh, Lao. So he has the typical uh, path for a startup founder. And uh, how are you doing today, Matt? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well uh, as actually that, that was very similar to the intro that i had at white combinator it's it's unclear about your past but um anyway welcome to the thanks for having me appreciate it yeah no i appreciate it and i think uh, you guys popped up onto my radar when you had a a recent uh, i believe it was a recent uh fun fundraising announcement so i guess i should first start off with a congrats on that thank you um, and, you know, I think this model is really interesting and I was joking with you before the show, but I really don't know anything about construction. The last construction project that I, I did took over a year to get a permit and I basically failed. So, and pulled out of that one. So, uh, that, that's the extent of my construction knowledge and skill, but I do know a thing or two about the gig economy and marketplaces. And that's really where our two worlds, uh, collide. And that's where I'm really interested in chatting with you today about. So thanks for coming on. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Really, really do appreciate it. I was looking yeah. forward to it. So first question, easy one, uh, nice warm up one. Give me the 30, 30 to 60 second pitch on Curry. What do they do? What do you guys do? Why should we care? And you know, why are you guys awesome? Well, we, we are the way the world uh, delivers construction supplies and materials. So that's our mission and vision. And uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a blue ocean uh, market out there. A huge, huge solve. Um, making wholesalers and distributors who sell the supplies uh, mm -hmm. that much more efficient and therefore helping contractors and anybody involved in the construction industry uh, really helping with their with their entire workflow. Yeah. So how big is this market? Because I imagine that if you're in the construction industry, maybe this problem is very apparent. But for those of us who aren't, we don't have a sense of the market size or even, you know, I, I guess, like you said, how big of a problem uh, this is that you guys are solving. Yeah, market market is huge. So the construction industry as a whole in the U.S. is over a trillion dollars a year. Um, we we like to look at it as a uh, um, when you when you think about it, it's it's all hiding in plain sight. You know, people mm -hmm. aren't construction is happening all around us. We don't see it. Um, I was also just so you don't feel alone here. I was not an expert, and still I'm not an expert in construction. It's just yeah. a matter of like what we've been focusing on. Uh, and learning very rapidly as, mm -hmm. you know, as we scale the company and learn what our customer wants. Um, our customers, who is the uh, construction wholesaler supplier, they don't have access to uh, what we call an elastic fleet. You know, so mm -hmm. they're they're paying for all these expenses, um, you know, month over month, and yeah. it doesn't doesn't perfectly match the demand of what they're what they're selling. So it's very expensive to maintain a fleet of trucks. Uh, Got to, it. So your primary customer are the construction companies that are actually selling things like lumber, toilets, piping. I don't know. I'm just kind of naming yeah. random things here, but is that the, but the gist of it? HVAC supplies, lumber, uh, hmm. plumbing, pipes. I mean, you, you name it. If it's construction materials, we're selling it. Got it. And you mentioned that it's a $1 trillion market. Is that sort of construction in general, you know, from A to Z, or is that the specific supplies that you guys are, or these, I guess, suppliers? Um, you know, I mean, because I guess there's what the labor piece of it, the supplies and parts piece of it. Are those the kind of two big ones? Uh, exactly. So we, we know just from how we've looked at the industry that roughly for every, every $100 uh, in sales for construction, roughly 5% is spent on the transportation of those materials, supplies hmm. and materials. So it's a massive market. Um, and we, we specifically as a company, we focus on um, what we call, you know, first movement of materials yeah. and supplies. And first movement is from the seller of those supplies to the job sites. But we also, we still, we still do transfers, you know, branch to branch. Mm -hmm. um, we also handle, you know, to job sites as well. So, um, and, and for the most part, we're, we're, we consider ourselves not, not a, we're not a B2C, we're definitely a B2B company. Our mm -hmm. customers are, uh, 
they can be mom and pop shops. They can be, you know, like smaller, smaller SMBs. Yeah. Um, also many of our customers are, you know, national, huge enterprise companies that yeah. are uh, delivering supplies just yeah. a major way. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'm on your website right now and there's two names that stand out to me, Lowe's and Home Depot. So I think most people are going to be familiar with those companies. And I see some other names here that I feel like I've seen on the sides of big trucks or in advertisements, Granger, Wind Supply. Um, so these are your actual customers, it sounds like. Yeah, like Ferguson, Hajoka, CED, mm -hmm. um, do, do a major amount of business with us. And Got it. Uh, yeah, so basically how it works like, we actually categorize Lowe's and Home Depot in different categories. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're just what we call um, you know the box stores, yeah. And like the main wholesaler suppliers that um, most professional contractors are working with mm -hmm. uh, are just typically high in plain sight. I mean, across the nation, there's there's Ferguson's, Hajoka's, there's Granger's across every city. So interesting. Okay. Yeah. And I think this is a really cool vertical because like I said, you know, I think people are familiar with the concept of construction, construction, but not the nuts and bolts and the details. So I think I've got to hear this story about the plumber and how uh, Curry got started and who, uh, whose idea it was. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I mean, like you mentioned, I was living overseas for a while. I, okay. I wrote a business perspective actually on, you know, brokering luggage space actually, but that quickly changed. Um, after moving, you know, back to America, uh, decided to work with my, you know, co-founder, Brian Gonzalez. Uh, yeah. He was a, you know, early, early software engineer, very early software engineer at Dollar Exchange Club. Um, cool. And so we were, we were just really honed in on last mile. We did not want to go into uh, food, just felt like a mm -hmm. red out there, lots of, lots of players. And we also just realized there's tons of other, I mean, this is working for food and transporting people. There's, yeah. a, there's a, a bunch of other opportunity out there and Brian had just purchased a house and he had a, you know, a large, you know, plumbing project there. Mm -hmm. And this guy named Mike Buck, who's a, a local plumber here in Ventura, he was, he was working on a project and we started chatting with him like, Hey, what's, and we started chatting with him after we saw him leave, you know, cause we're living, working in Brian's living room yeah. and we went to the supply store a couple of times. So, hey, what's, what's going on there? You know, like. You know, friends like I, I go to the supply store too. You know, because you know his house yeah. is fixer upper, and uh, you know going to Lowe's all the time, and just felt like it was a pain point for him. I'm wondering if mm. hey, is this a pain point for you as well? You know, we tallied it up. I mean, I mean they're spending about an hour, an yeah. hour every every day doing supply runs, whether it's in the morning mm. or they they have like a what we call an oh shit moment, and they go you know yeah. forget something or something's something breaks, or there's a return, it's a wrong part. Mm -hmm. Just realize how massive the problem was. So my first launch, we launched a beta after speaking with a ton more, uh, you know, contractors and living in Ventura, a bunch of houses were, you know, had burned down in the, the Thomas fire. Yeah. So lots of construction crews. Uh, I would just drive, drive around the morning with, you know, some donuts and uh, coffee and just, just chat mm -hmm. with contractors and yeah. figuring out their workflow, just trying to learn as much as possible. Um, but then after a few months, we, we noticed that, you know, the contractors love the idea because they need their supplies, but in the workflow, really the main, there's an expectation on the wholesaler distributor to uh, provide delivery yeah. and they, they need to provide that delivery in order to secure a sale. Otherwise, you know, they, they lose it to a competitor and that's where mm -hmm. Curry comes in. Uh, Got it. We're, we're not selling the supplies, we're fulfilling the delivery. Got it. So it sounds like the initial problem though, I mean, I, I actually, now that I think about it, you know, I've been there too, where I've had a plumber or electrician and, you know, these guys aren't cheap. Sometimes they, they charge a couple hundred or hundreds of dollars per hour. Right. And you don't really want them running to and from Home Depot. You want them working at the task at hand. Yeah. Uh, but are they actually, you know, like downloading the Curry app and ordering supplies off the, off, you know, from Curry from a Home Depot or a Lowe's, or is it a mix of that? And, you know, people placing big orders from, some of these distributors and you guys fulfilling the delivery right so the the two components of that the 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 customer who's typically downloading app and, and utilizing it mm -hmm. it's typically a web app and it's typically the wholesaler distributor so the individual branches are are booking the deliveries after they've already sold the supplies got it to their customer who's a contractor got it so i assume that could be you know very large orders for example yeah, yeah, or yeah. even like even recurring deliveries and, and scheduled Got deliveries. It. You know, there's a general contractor that's you know mm -hmm. has a very large project, yeah, um, and needs a, you know, like, like a thousand pounds of pipe delivered every right. every 
there's a certain day on the cadence that they, mm-hmm. they choose and they work out with the supplier, but we work with those wholesalers to, to fulfill those deliveries. So, I mean, so there's some branches out there that, that are just brand new and they mm-hmm. don't want to, you know, take the expense of, you know, purchasing a truck, having the liability and like, um, managing that and it's expensive yeah. also maintaining it ma- maintenance fees and that's where Perry steps in like we allow them to scale right away and uh, if a sales call comes in they can say yes mm-hmm. knowing that they can fulfill the delivery in real time oh, got it okay so yeah no i appreciate the uh, insight on the demand side so it sounds like that's kind of a lot of those b2b opportunities do you have many folks on the demand side that are just like you know a one-off plumber that uh, you know are ordering parts you know one at one at a time or you know a toilet or whatever they might need. Yeah, I mean, very very small percent of our, you know, customer base actually Got are it. contractors. Like maybe less than five okay. percent are contractors, but we don't we don't prohibit them from yeah from using the the, the curry service at all. Got it's, it. But it sounds like the focus is on that fulfillment of the bigger box store type orders and items and solving their uh, logistic you know last mile needs. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, we increase sales and let them save money at the same time. So. Very cool. Um, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I appreciate, like I said, I appreciate that uh, insight into the demand side. And obviously the fun part about running a marketplace is that you sort of sometimes have two businesses in one, right? So we've talked demand. Uh, I want to shift a little bit more to the supply side of things. And I think a good starting point, I'm kind of curious to know um, if you can share a little bit of details around, you know, sort of what is Curry delivering? I mean, you know, if you've got most common items or most common vehicles, anything to give us a little insight into, you know, are we talking uh, lots of toilets or lots of wood or lots of pipe or everything and anything in between? <laughs> so many, so many toilets. I, really? I, I had no idea so many toilets were, were moving. <laughs> it's, it's unreal. Um, but I would say that majority of our deliveries are actually, uh, you know, plumbing supplies, like, hmm. uh, um, like ton, tons of pipe, some 20 foot 15 foot pvc hmm. copper steel, okay. you know, all, all types of materials of what they're made of but yeah we're, we're we're doing roughly like a delivery like that every minute of the day hmm. so a lot of plumbing supplies and is that a function of the customers that you have or just the kind of needs that you know those plumbing supplies tend to be needed you know uh, in a way that your product can serve very easily it's it's both actually when when you know Brian and I first started the company we realized if we can if we can transport and move plumbing supplies we can transport and move anything mm-hmm. um, so typically our approach to you know our go to market plan is typically to to focus on like let's hit the plumbing HVAC first and then yeah. after that starting going going after all the other verticals so got it we get the vertical we go after next in in a region of geo is uh, like electrical supplies electrical wholesalers got um, it and we've already established fleet by having plumbing HVAC in there. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, so that that's usually how it goes. Um, but we deliver everything. We, we deliver, man, there's, there's so many random things that go on <laughs> uh, pallets or to job sites, you know, mm-hmm. electrical coiling, all kinds of things, conduit. Got it. So what types of vehicles uh, do you need for all of these deliveries? Because you do use a, a fleet of independent contractors, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the, the cool thing about it is that we are like the one-stop shop for it. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, cars, pickup trucks, vans, sprinter vans, like trucks, mm-hmm. trucks with like full trailers even. Um, yeah. And we even outfit a lot of the, you know, pickup truck drivers that are independent contractors on our platform. We can outfit them with like pipe racks so that mm. they can... Uh, obtain more jobs because like I said, most of our most of our deliveries is like longer items like lumber and pipe and things like that so mm-hmm. um, it's just like an advantage to work with curry as an independent contractor because you know they yeah. can get outfitted with a with a pipe rack for example so a normal company that's looking to you know sort of increase their supply of drivers i think it's pretty easy you can do a lot of performance marketing post on facebook craigslist mm-hmm. indeed linkedin pretty standard yep. and it's uh, you know especially in last mile delivery it's not too expensive but uh, what what do you got do you guys are you guys able to do the same thing but just have yeah. to you know filter down to people that have specific vehicle requirements we do all the above so all, all okay. the all the platforms that you mentioned yes we we utilize those to recruit drivers uh, we get a lot of word of mouth, hmm. which, which is awesome. And we also get a lot of actually contractors who already have, uh, it's, it's awesome because one, the, the drivers are very familiar with the materials, the supplies, and even the locations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they also have, you know, trucks with pipe racks or like yeah. extensions on there. So they're, um, you know, in their downtime, they also get uh, extra work, you know, mm-hmm. 
their trucks to fulfill the deliveries uh, for for other contractors who have work. Yeah. So it's been a it's been a, a cool, uh, just cool marketplace. It's, yeah. it's very fun to innovate. The other cool yeah. thing is that like because we have all these different vehicle types, um, we're able to really focus on drivers that really haven't had an opportunity to uh, utilize their vehicles for you know ride share as much. You know people mm-hmm. who have you know trucks. Um, don't really want to use those trucks to deliver right. food or it's not really yeah. going to work or a lift to transport people. So that that's been fun. And construction never shut down during uh, yeah. COVID either. So it was a super good feeling knowing that we we're providing. Yeah, you know, that's cool. People. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's interesting on the vehicle requirements because I sort of look at rideshare and Uber and Lyft. They typically have the most strict vehicle requirements. You need sort of a newish car, four doors, and this is kind of in the gig economy. You know, when you move over to food delivery and really anything or not anything, but most things last mile delivery, especially that is small to medium size. I mean, there's basically, it's like the wild, wild west. You know, you can have <laughs> an old car, you can have a new car, you can deliver with a friend, a family member, you can, you know, be on a scooter, you can be on a bike. Uh, you know, at one point Postmates let you walk to do deliveries in like very dense urban centers, which uh, I don't think worked out too well, but uh, so you know, it's really just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, if it's really short distance or you're a fast runner, I guess, but I, I'm curious, where do you think you guys fall on that spectrum? Because they, you know, I, I think the F-150 is the most popular uh, vehicle in America, but um, you know, there are, you know, I, I'm curious to know where you think you fall on that spectrum as far as like, you know, the vehicle requirements, um, you know, if you're talking to people about coming to work for curry you know how much of a a roadblock is that for folks it's it's much it's much less of a roadblock uh, Mm -hmm. for us because um you know i i think you know uber uber and lyft have in those those types of platforms they because they're transporting you know people they want the cars to look a little nicer and newer not you know like show up with like a i don't i don't know just like a lot of cosmetic damage because then there's like driver's not a good driver you know there's a safety yep. there's all kinds of things going on there so um yeah we're, we're, we're not gonna like turn away someone who has a truck that's like you know eight years old for example mm. or like that. that's just not gonna happen um, got it so and, and again like you said the f-150 f-250s like those, those big trucks i mean i mean we, we have a lot like even my dad's yeah. neighbor drives for us and he he loves it he's an like, ex-marine yeah well, and I assume too, if you're sort of, you know, networking and a lot, getting a lot of word of mouth referrals from the construction industry, if you know, if you're working in the construction industry, you probably already have, you know, most likely a vehicle that lends itself to operating on the Curry platform versus, you know, if you just go and pull a hundred ran, random citizens in your neighborhood, you know, you're going to get probably many more sedans than trucks and vans and sprinters and things like that, right? Exactly. The, the the sort of a very cool, interesting thing that we learned early on was that mm-hmm. there's a, there's a huge percentage of construction supplies that will fit into a car. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would say roughly a third of our deliveries uh, will fit into a car. Mm-hmm. But our customers, who are the wholesalers, again, they like to have a one stop shop. They don't want okay, right. I'll use this company for cars and this company for pickup trucks and these for like you know, whatever, like steak bed trucks or some of the larger trucks that maybe you tow a trailer to deliver pipe they want. And we're already integrated with so many payment systems that mm-hmm. it's, it's very easy and offer net terms actually to our customers. And it, it benefits the drivers too, because, you know, like you said, like um, the contractors who are on uh, working on a job site, you mm-hmm. know, oftentimes making a, a very expensive, like prevailing wage. And when they need a, a, a what they need a part, they need a part. I mean, yeah, um, right. So that benefits the drivers, actually, because we're able to mm-hmm. pay more. Got it. Yeah, no, that, that I kind of imagine that the urgency of the parts that are needed, you know, allow you to charge the companies more or, you know, even kind of like the average order value of the parts, you know, if it's thousands of dollars and you charge 0.1%, it's still a pretty, you know, pretty, pretty hefty fee, for example, right, for that delivery and probably seems pretty reasonable. So I'm curious to know a little bit more about the folks uh, that are actually driving for you. I didn't realize that a third of your deliveries are in a sedan. I mean, I've got a sedan, so maybe I can sign up. <laughs> some I, deliveries in yeah, I, I mean tell me sure. more about what it's like to uh to drive for curry yeah absolutely i thought for sure before this podcast i swear i'm like okay harry is going to <laughs> going to do a a curry delivery and get to walk through it so i 
I'm, I'm all about that. You know, I, I am very well known for testing things out. Yep. Like Uber just made this big announcement about this new rental feature. And I literally have a trip next week. So I go on to their app and, you know, from the customer side and request a rental. And it's like six times the price of what I just got on Priceline, tweet it out. And then their PR guy emails me, oh, sorry. You know, so it's like, I do think that a lot of times it is important to like actually test a lot of these things out in, in the real world. But um, it's interesting, you know, that you guys have this, you know, because it kind of makes me think too, like, what is the most, um, you know, I, I guess I would say like in demand vehicle, because I imagine if, you know, I'm the only one with a certain type of vehicle, maybe that's the way that I make the most amount of money. Or I'm just curious to learn a little bit more about what it's like to actually drive and deliver for Curry. Yeah, well, first, first, I, I used to do the driving when we were first starting, like I would just, mm. I would get in my Ford Focus, which I still have, yeah. it's like 2003 Ford Focus. And I would, I would take deliveries and my co-founder, Brian, he has a Sprinter you know, sprinter van. So he would, he would take the larger ones or would swap vehicles, whoever was available. Oh. It was very in interesting, you know, humble beginnings, you know, just the way it all began with us. Yeah. But uh, I would say that the most in-demand vehicle that we need just because it's, it's first of all is, is uh, a pickup truck with pipe rack hmm. um, that, that can move the majority of what needs to be moved. Um, we do like pickup trucks also with trailers. Um, because they can, you know, you, they can pull a, a heavier amount of, yeah. of pipe or lumber, for example. And then, um, yeah, I mean, we're working with some cool companies too for, for you know, someone may have an F-150, but they don't have a pipe rack or mm -hmm. they don't have a, uh, you know, a trailer. And there's an interesting company called Level Goals and they help drivers actually mm -hmm. finance like maybe extra things they need as an independent contractor. So it's a very cool company. And I'm also speaking to another one called Cover next week. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. Yeah. They've been on our podcast before. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited to talk with them. So very cool. Um, so you've got a fleet of independent contractors that have all different types of vehicles, but it sounds like pickup truck with the pipe rack is, uh, you know, can handle most of the jobs. Um, and I guess just before we get into, you know, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you might guess I'm going to ask how much they make at some point, but before yeah. I ask you that question, um, what, where, you know, you mentioned that these folks driving for you are like actually, you know, construction workers, you know, they might Sometimes. be working on other jobs in their downtime. What's like the profile, the background, um, you know, what, what is like the average or, you know, what are the big groups of uh, folks driving for you? What do they look like? So, yeah, not, not, I would say a smaller percentage or actually, cause you know, contractors are very busy and construction mm -hmm. is yeah. job. it's a very busy industry. So uh, those, those like the, the real hustler guys that are like guys and gals that are just like, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to augment my time right now. I'm, I'm down until two, I'm going to take a delivery, but yeah. Um, they look very much like a, you know, a Postmates driver or an Uber hmm. driver. We, we actually, cause we were paying, so, cause we were paying so much more, like they were, yeah. we had drivers calling us. Um, and I, I mean, I don't know if I can say this, but I mean, we, we used to just like, you know, we'd, or, we'd order like a, a Postmates driver, for example, I'm like, Hey, yeah. why don't you, you know, try and drive for us. <laughs> you, you yeah. would, you, you would make three times what you're making delivering food with us. And we would tell them the price that we paid them yeah. to move construction supplies. So. You, you can definitely say that, Matt, because I did a whole episode with a guy named Hamed Yazdi who uh, would fly to cities all over the country when uh, Uber was offering Lyft drivers a 500 bonus to switch or a few hundred dollars. And he would basically call Lyft rides nonstop 24 seven for four days and then fly back yeah. home and made tens of thousands of dollars. So you can definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's the thing. It's like, you know, the, the, the drivers, like they, they don't, they don't need to be loyal to a single platform. I, yeah. I think as in like, hello, they're independent contractors. Like they, they should be taking the jobs that are paying them the best mm -hmm. money and, and yeah. what they, what they prefer to do. So. Um, well, I think there's this really interesting opportunity too, for the companies that do have the ability, you know, maybe, maybe you guys aren't doing the volume of a DoorDash or a Postmates yet, but you have the ability to sort of, you know, I mean, I guess really like poach the best drivers from Postmates and DoorDash, because there is a lot of variability in the gig economy, right? And I think that though, the, the challenge in the gig economy right now is that if you're one of the top drivers, you can make more money than the average driver using strategy and, you know, kind of knowing where and what to do, but the kind of average pay, you know, like every driver gets the same per mile, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas I bet there's companies like you, you know, that if you can get the top Postmates, DoorDash and other gig worker last mile drivers, you might be willing to actually pay them more per mile, you know, on, on, on a basis, right? So I think there's like this really interesting opportunity to basically poach the best drivers because the companies don't value them. Exactly. And, and there could be a lot of, you know, best drivers out there that just literally don't have the opportunity to drive mm -hmm. those 
space just because they have a different type type of vehicle. So yeah, um, yeah, and it's it's, I mean, it's great for us, right? Like the 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 gig economy has already been well established by you know the the you know larger players before us. It's it's created an awareness that um, you know where drivers are seeking opportunities to like either aug yeah. augment augment their work or to do it you know you know quite often you know it's yeah. like a daily thing so um riding and riding you know you know standing on their shoulders as as people say like yeah they, they've done a good job of creating a yeah. awareness of the type of marketplace so how do you think about the earnings for your couriers and uh, i guess also what do, you, what do you call your uh delivery folks every company calls them something different i'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's got to be couriers right <laughs> well yeah we, we actually we, we used to do that like curry you know, we're both an I, ers, right? Dash, dash ers, you know, but you know, we don't. It's not like we we really drill that anywhere. And okay. Explain it, but um, yeah. I mean, we. I think even our terms of service, we refer to them as as couriers. You know, so yeah. Got it. And so, how do you think about the earnings for your couriers? Well, it it's it's a it will it will depend on what type of vehicle types so like mm -hmm. car. It can be a car anywhere up to like a, a box truck, um, whatever they may may own yeah. and operate. So I uh, can go. So maybe we start with like the most common. Is the most common the pickup truck with a pipe rack or a pickup truck? Period. Yeah. So I I'll just give the whole range. Like from sure. from car to you know to to truck, they're making anywhere from fifteen to thirty five an hour. Okay. Depending. Got it. So that's and that's, that's... comes out to. Got it. And as far as like their utilization, is that the 15, is that 15 to 35 an hour, like including downtime or, you know, I think that's the tricky thing sometimes with these uh, gig economy companies, especially the ones that kind of have peaks and, you know, kind of peaks and valleys when it comes to demand. Right. I mean, if I log on in a, in a time where it's not that busy, I may, I may not be anywhere close to even 15 an hour. Right. Yeah. So that's right. Exactly. So it's not, it's not like we, you know, we're still fairly new. We're like, you know, two years old. So mm -hmm. in, in certain geographies, it's not like uh, we have, you know, you know, tons of drivers that can't, you know, they're waiting around in a parking lot, you yeah. know, like, you know, Dodger stadium just got out and, you know, waiting to drive people home. So did, so those, those types, what's good about Curry though, is the fact that like uh, in the construction industry, you know, there's, there's definitely, there's definitely peak, peak times. Mm -hmm. uh, they're actually yeah, what are the uh, best times to drive for curry yeah morning mm -hmm. morning and then there's a there's typically a peak after lunch so you know around like one things yeah. spike and then and then you get some like you know end of day type of deliveries where they want the supplies maybe like first thing in the morning but they still want them on site beforehand Got so it. You get a lot of deliveries around like there's typically a spike around the 3 30 and 4 mm -hmm. so those those are those are the best times to be on Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, every, well, not every platform, but, you know, sometimes the different verticals, you know, ride hail, food delivery, you know, construction delivery, they tend to have their peaks and yep. valleys, obviously. And yeah. so it's interesting sometimes for the, some of the smaller services or the ones getting started, like we've done um, a couple articles recently on a, on a company called Hop, Skip, Drive and their rides for teens, right. And rides for mm -hmm. kids. And you can actually, you know, like similar with Curry, you can make more than kind of, you know, driving for Uber and Lyft on average, because, you know, parents are willing to pay more for their kids, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the times where you can drive for them are more limited, right. Mornings and then after school uh, type Pickup. So, but it's nice to kind of like supplement with Uber and Lyft or food delivery uh, in between. So it's kind of why I was interesting to learn about this opportunity because it's sort of like a nice uh, diversification too. So I, I imagine that there's probably, uh, well, I mean, you're telling me that you're recruiting from Postmates and DoorDash. So I imagine this could be a cool opportunity for people uh, in the last mile or even, you know, doing rideshare right now. Exactly. Exactly. So I, you know, there's typically peaks like in lunch, obviously, for anybody delivering food. Yeah. yeah so huge opportunity they switch over to our app and get you know get get higher paying you know jobs yeah. quite honestly can so, uh can folks make a full-time living uh delivering with curry or are most of your drivers part-time most most are you know part-time and more like you know ad hoc here and there but mm -hmm. we do we do have some in some geographies where it's just we're doing an you know a very very high volume of deliveries you know higher yeah. metro, like larger metro, metropolitan areas where we like have a focus on NFL cities, for example, mm -hmm. um, many, many more deliveries in, in those yeah. areas. So, 
Well, because I think there's this interesting phenomenon across many marketplace businesses where a lot of them market it as, you know, sort of part-time, especially, you know, Uber and Lyft who are facing a lot of regulatory issues, you know, they market it as part-time gig work, you know, kind of work whenever you want. And the numbers pretty clearly reflect that, you know, that most drivers, 70 to 80% are doing 20 hours a week or less, but those drivers, the 10 to 20% that are doing 30 hours a week or more, which a lot of jurisdictions consider full-time are driving, you know, 50 to 60% of the total trips, you know, they're driving 50 to 60% of the total hours on the platform. So they actually, you know, like we call them power drivers, like they actually end up being very valuable to the platforms, um, even though, you know, the kind of more you do these jobs sometimes, frankly, you know, I think like the tougher it is, right? If you're any, any job that you do, you know, five hours a week versus 40 becomes tougher, but you get to take less advantage of the flexibility, for example, the more you work. So I'm curious how you think about that part-time versus full-time dyna dynamic and, you know, like with your workforce. So for sure, like the, uh, so one of, one of our offerings are, are, you know, we, we call them route runners, which mm -hmm. are, you know, schedule, schedule deliveries, which show up, you know, Monday through Friday, for example, in the morning yeah. for a supplier. Um, and I guess, I guess those drivers would be what you would consider like, um, the power drivers and mm -hmm. the people who are, you know, you know, day in, day out, like they're all about curry. Yeah. So yeah. And as far as how we look at them, like super valuable, we have, you know, we, we pay out daily um and we don't we don't do uh you know we don't we don't charge we don't make that finance charge on them you know like mm -hmm. a, a instant payout we, we don't do that um that's sort of just been in our dna just you know yeah we'll, we'll take care of that well that uh that instant pay is the feature is uh pretty popular i think with uh pretty much every worker for every uh platform yeah, out there huh <laughs> but they get but they get charged for it right so yeah. they get you, you want your instant payout hey we're gonna charge you 50 cents per transaction yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't do that. They, they can yeah. rest, they're going to get their, their pay end of day. Yeah, I've actually got a cool uh, company that I just started working with uh, with uh, that actually is solving. It's kind of like the Instant Pay 2.0. I'll have to give you the the heads up on that after this podcast. Please. But um, the, you know, before before we get into setting up all of your B two B relationships and all those <laughs> details, I have one more topic that I kind of want to go over with you, and it's sort of a selfish topic. And I joked earlier, I don't know a ton about construction, but I'm curious to know, like, what what are some of the challenges associated with the construction industry? You know, I mean, one that kind of comes to mind is that, you know, like, kind of like you said yourself, like you, you didn't, you know, we've interviewed folks in the past, who, you know, they grew up in, you know, like the limo business, and they saw this problem with their parents, you know, and then kind of, um, you know, launched this platform to help it. I'm thinking of Swoop here in Los Angeles, that's a marketplace for group transportation, but you weren't uh, necessarily a subject matter expert on construction, it sounds like. So, um, you know, has that been a challenge that, you know, you kind of have to learn this new industry? It's been a challenge, but but super fun. You know, I, yeah. I I I love to learn new things. I feel like a sort of a glorified you know door to door door to door salesman in, mm -hmm. in the beginning. Um, would walk into these branches, you know, in you know downtown LA. Um, just you know, there's there's typically bar stools and a and a counter. Um, yeah. Counter sales, and I would hear, I would hear dot matrix machines in the background, <laughs> and, and, and 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 like I know how big this company is that has this yeah. brand. But it's ubiquitous. It's it's across the board, like all the branches, and not just one company, many. Yeah. And then I'm looking at their, you know, like their TMS systems and like the, the computer screen screens in black, and 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 capital green letters, so they're using terminal. Yeah. And that just excites me. I mean, yes, that's it's it's a challenge, but there's there's definitely some wisdom in like don't fix what isn't broken. It's, it's mm -hmm. working for them. It's it, there's like these legacy systems that have just worked yeah. really well. But there's also some movement, and there's also a generation gap uh, in the construction industry. There's so for like mm. the younger, up and coming generation, like that, and that middle portion is is fairly missing across the board. And then mm -hmm. there's the the older generation. So the the shift is going to be very very rapid. It's not going to be like yeah. most industry where it's a gradual transition. Yeah. So. It, it yeah. kind of actually reminds me of, you know, I mentioned the Swoop uh, episode that we did. And one of the things that they, it, it is very similar, you know, there are a lot of these basically group transportation owners, you know, limos, party buses all around uh, Los Angeles where they started. And, you know, it was like a much older, you know, sort of school, older generation, right, of owners. And, you know, they weren't as familiar with the technology naps. One thing that has always stood out to me that they said uh, was that when they started launching, you know, they would go and try to convince people to come on their platform. And it was just like talking to a brick wall. And once 
they started bringing them contracts, like, Hey, we've got someone who just booked on our app and they need a bus, you know, next Thursday at 7 PM for $1,500. And they're like, Oh, where do I sign up? You know, how do I, how do I get on this app? Um, I'm curious kind of like how, you know, if you could elaborate on any sort of, I don't know if you call them generational issues or just, you know, some of these industries, you know, that aren't, like you said, like you walked in, you know, they aren't as up to speed on some of these on how technology can help. Yeah. So be, because because our main customer is the the wholesaler themselves mm -hmm. and they are a um essentially a, a selling that a selling mechanism they want to sell more they don't yeah. necessarily yeah. want to deliver more but they know that when they're delivering more they've made more sales mm -hmm. so it's a very easy conversation to have with them yeah. um hey when your truck maybe you maybe you own a truck and it's already out on delivery uh, but you get those you, you get a sales call and you mm -hmm. can knowing you can say yes immediately and not lose that sale to yeah. is just like it's a major. Yeah. I mean, I imagine these wholesalers though are pretty technologically advanced, right? They've got lots of uh, inventory management and supply chain and all of that, though. Yes, but very, um, very like old, older systems, I would say for the yeah, most. Okay. Part. So, um, wh whoever's going to be like tackling a lot of that, has, there's there's a lot of opportunities out there, I'd say. But as yeah. far as as far as resistance, um, may, maybe to that, like I don't want that. Really, don't really have a, a lot of that because yeah. there's there's just a desire. Like when 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 the, our customer's customer, who's the contractor, yeah. they're on site. That you know, they're they're burning five hundred dollars an hour just waiting for a supply, yeah. and their main supplier that has made the sale can't fulfill that delivery in time or in a time timely manner for them for their crew. Yeah, uh, it's it's money lost. I mean, yeah. money lost by the contractor, money lost by the the wholesaler, and we're able to fix both those problems for for both of those stakeholders. Yeah. it's it's an easy it's an easier sell. Yeah, and the technology and is super easy and intuitive for, for them. I mean, we're yeah. we're not we're not getting the middle like they can maintain using their their right. their current systems and just open up our web app and you know tap in A to B. Yeah, I think where you guys have an interesting advantage too is that, you know, like you said, you kind of are a B2B business and you kind of have a limited number of medium to large, and I'm sure some smaller, but a lot of medium to large customers. And so all of those millions of contractors, plumbers, electricians out there, you know, like they're going to your customers to order, right? So you don't have a ton of exactly. B2B to C interaction, which is usually where a lot of the friction, a lot of the call acquisition costs can, you know, drive up the prices, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you nailed it right there. They absolutely nailed it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's reduced friction and made, made us grow very, very quickly. Um, yeah. Are there other marketplaces that you've studied or other last mile businesses that kind of operate in a similar, I don't, I wouldn't call it like capture, but like, you know, it, basically these you know, contractors, right? Like if they go to a Granger and Granger happens to be partnered with you guys for your, their delivery, like they don't have any other, I guess they could go pick it up themselves, but like you're the only delivery option, right? So it's kind of like a, yeah. a, a great uh, customer capture for you in that sense, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge, you know, and that can be a bottoms up sales approach would be a top down in some cases. Most, 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 most time it's both. You build trust on that bottoms mm -hmm. up, but um, it, it, it's, it's a great thing. I mean, and yes, they they will like before they know about curry like they will you know fulfill the delivery. they'll get a sales salesperson off of sales and mm. you know put them in a vehicle and then sometimes deliver or pick up materials or even fulfill a transfer by themselves and that's yeah. that's a that's a, i mean that's a double net loss they're losing someone making more sales than else <laughs> yeah it's and then you know the cost of them being on the road so yeah it's 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 great we we actually have a lot of customers who uh, we actually reduce the number of transfers that are needed by um, all these branches. And that ha that's a daily occurrence. It happens all yeah. the time. And they can, one profit center, one location can make a sale just because they know that there's inventory in another yeah. branch and they're able to capture that sale and we'll just have curry delivered direct. We, we, even, we even deliver from manufacturers directly to job sites. That's another Very win cool. for wholesalers. Yeah, so there's a lot of opportunity nice. there. Yeah. Well, very cool. I appreciate you uh, sharing your journey with Curry and giving me a little insight and also, uh, so like I said, selfishly educating me on the construction industry. I learned a few new terms, learned a, a bit of how the construction industry works and what can we expect from Curry going forward? Where can people, uh, if they've been inspired by this podcast, where can they learn more? Uh, Curry.com, C-U-R-R-I.com. 
uh, if they want to drive, there's a little tab up there where they can click on and get started right away. Very cool. Yeah, no, I think uh, definitely you'll uh, get at least a few drivers out of this, and I'm curious to hear their uh, experience. I know you guys are operating uh, nationwide. Is that right? Yes, nation nationwide. So, um, yeah, welcome. <laughs> Very welcome. cool. Yes. All right, Matthew. Appreciate you coming on. Take care. Thanks, Harry. Appreciate it.